Hello there, this is Scott and welcome to another vlog. Now in the, I think it was the last one anyway, the last vlog I had mentioned how I was uh, plastering and decorating my daughter's bedroom and uh, surprisingly I had quite a few people asked to see the process and uh, see the final result. Now I don't want to go into too much detail here because it's going to be quite boring for the sort of majority of people but what it is I'll show you a few uh, sort of before and after photos and a few in between photos as well and uh, just uh, quickly uh, talk about it so hopefully this will last less than a minute so okay so this photo here is the room before I started doing any work and as you can see it's a dark sort of blue room there was a the previous owners had a couple of little boys who was uh, staying in that room so it's all uh, sort of boy orientated there's dinosaurs on the uh, on the walls and the wallpaper is ripped and torn in places plus also I had to uh, put in some new electrical sockets so I've had to chase or put chases into the wall which obviously needed repairing as well so I started to uh, pull off the wallpaper and I quickly realized that the majority of the plaster underneath had actually blown so as I'm pulling off the wallpaper the plaster's coming off with it which then meant I needed to obviously repair the walls and then uh, get my trail out and give it another skin with some fresh plaster now luckily I used to be a plasterer but it's been about sort of four well probably four years since I've actually done any plastering but um it didn't really feel like I'd been away to be quite honest it went on really nicely and I'm really pleased with the final result and then once the plaster all dried out I then painted it now this is not my preferred choice of colour this is my daughter's choice of colour so blame her and as you can see it has come out quite a uh, a shocking pink let's say and uh, I'm not too sure if you can actually see it but in a certain light you can actually see a uh, lot of speckles and that's because I put glitter in the paint and when you've got the light shining through it the room really does look uh, really really nice and as you can see from my daughter's face here she's uh, very happy with it okay so that was the room uh, plastered and decorated now today I'm going to be doing a um, a giveaway for Mirage Cigarettes latest platinum range of e-liquids you're going to be getting a whole sort of box set basically which uh, comes in a nice presentation box like that and um, originally they did send it out to me saying oh can you do a review on this not realizing that I, I don't really do juice reviews anymore it's been about a year and a half since I've done it I've not officially stopped but I'd rather avoid them if I possibly can I just think they're a bit of a waste of time to be quite honest uh, so I said to him, well, how about I do a sort of quick sort of first impressions of the flavour or flavours in uh, one of my vlogs, and then you provide me with another um, box set of your range, and I can do a giveaway to uh, the people who watch the video. And I said, yeah, that's perfectly fine. So that's what we're doing now. So um, I'll quickly talk to you about the uh, the, the bottles. Also, like I said, you get five flavours, all come in a nice little big presentation box. Inside that, you get more little presentation boxes and inside those you get uh, these really nice little um, glass bottles which look very much like um, sort of perfume bottles so I took a really nice photo of these the other day in my kitchen I'll show you that now so uh, you know, the actual product uh, presentation really is uh, quite sleek in design I'll read out uh, some of the uh, sort of um, promotional material they also sent it says our platinum range is available in zero up to 1.2 milligrams and they come in 30 ml bottles and they're mainly aimed at the sub ohm vapor but work equally well in modern tanks. James, our flavorist, has spent many months developing them, ensuring they pass our toxicology reports from our UK based lab, and we're proud to be able to boast our completely diacetyl free, acetoin free, acetyl propionyl all, all the bad crap basically is free of all that and uh, one thing I was really surprised about <coughs> when reading through this is that um, they've now got 44 brick and mortar stores uh, in the UK now I didn't even think there's 44 vape shops in the UK let alone 44 all belonging to uh, one company and Mirage that was the first people I ever done a review for I'd purchased one of their little sig -like kits back in uh, 2008 then uploaded my first ever review in December 2008 and it was on the uh, little Mirage Mirage cigarette I think that's what it was called then so you know they've um, been going for a long old time now and also I just can't believe they had 44 brick and mortar stores 
Right, so uh, what I'm going to do then is I'll read out the description of the flavour and then I'm uh, going to cut to the kitchen where I've done the, uh, I've already sort of pre-recorded the, um, like my first impressions of the e-liquids. And I've done it in the kitchen because, like I said, it's a very small room here and if I'm going to be um, doing quite a bit of vaping, it's just not really practical because the room's just going to sort of fill up very quickly and uh, it's going to make for a bit of a messy video. So. I'll tell you what their, their description is, and I'm going to cut to my first impressions in the kitchen, then come back, go on to the next one, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, just trying to want to do this in order that I actually recorded them downstairs. I think the first one I done was, what was it? They, they're called Snatcher, Acacia, SY4, Sly Fox, and Blockbuster. And I think the first one I done must have been Blockbuster. It was. It was Blockbuster. Okay, so and this is described as a complex blend of sweet cinema popcorn, a vanilla bean, and coconut, and is incredibly Moorish. Okay, so um, for these vaping shots, I was using a Twisted Messes RDA single coil, reading 0.85 ohms at 35 watts, if my memory serves me correctly. And these are, it does say here, doesn't it? it? Did say somewhere what the PG in that is. I'll put it up on the screen here. I can't quite remember. And the, the print's a little bit small for me to read at the moment. So I'll let you know what the PG, VG content is on the screen here. Okay, so let's uh, go straight ahead and talk about Blockbuster. Okay, so the um, the first flavour that I'm getting is a uh, really nice little popcorn flavour. It's what I would describe as a sort of a sweet caramel style popcorn rather than a sort of a salted popcorn. Um, not overly strong. It's it's definitely strong enough for me. If it's any stronger, I'd probably uh, find it to be quite sickly. But uh, it's just a, a nice little strength. If you do prefer really sort of um, strong sort of popcorn taste, it may not be for you, but uh, for me personally, uh, it's probably just right. If it's any stronger, I'd probably find it a little bit on the, uh, on the sickly side. I'm getting, um, I don't think it's actually meant to have any in it, but I am getting a very sort of faint taste of chocolate. And if I was going to describe it, I'd say this is like a caramel popcorn dipped in chocolate. But like I said, I don't think it's actually meant to have any, any chocolate in it. I think it's popcorn and, and vanilla and something else. Can't really say I'm picking up vanilla as such, but definitely getting a nice little popcorn flavour. And uh, what I think anyway, uh, according to my taste buds, is like a um, sort of faint aftertaste of like a chocolate or something like that. It's a nice flavour. It's, um, it's not something that I could vape all day, you know, maybe an hour, two hours at a time. I could probably quite enjoy it any longer than that. And I think uh, I probably would get quite fed up with it. I'm just not really into those sort of flavours. Uh, personally, I prefer my sort of tobaccos or nice sort of, um, sort of fruity, refreshing flavours. But as it goes, it's a nice sort of a popcorn vape with a, a slight edge of chocolate, even though it's not got any chocolate in there. But obviously, that's just my taste buds. Your taste buds will probably pick up something completely different. Okay, so that was Blockbuster. Now the next one, again, if my memory serves me correctly, was called Acacia. And uh, the description for this is expertly baked banana bread with a hint of caramel and a sprinkling of roasted hazelnuts Rich and satisfying. Okay, so this is Acacia. Okay, so you know, straight away the dominant flavour here is banana. Now, I love bananas as in the real fruit. I can eat them all day long. I have them in my smoothies, really enjoy them, but I've never been a big fan 
of sort of banana flavoured milkshake, banana flavoured sweets and uh, banana flavoured vapes because they, they never taste authentic or they, what's the best way, they always taste a little bit sort of artificial, the uh, banana flavours. Um, not too sure why they can't replicate a, a real sort of banana, but it, you know, it tastes like banana, but it's just that sort of slight sort of artificial taste to it. And this is uh, no exception. It's a nice banana flavour, um, but uh, not something that I'm going to be sort of vaping on for too long. Um, now, what flavour we're getting out of this, which again is pretty much almost as strong as the actual banana itself, it's almost like a, um, like a sort of a cake batter type flavour. Now, I think if I recall correctly, the description described it as banana bread. Now, I don't recall ever having banana bread and I don't recall ever having a banana cake either. But if I ever did have a banana cake, which I'm going to assume is the same as banana bread, um, then I'd imagine this is what it's going to taste like. That sort of a banana flavour mixed in with a sort of cake, sort of slash cake batter type mix. Again, the strength of the flavour for me is pretty much spot on. If it was any stronger, you know, I'd probably struggle to actually uh, finish this segment to be quite honest. Just because, uh, like I said, me personally, I'm not into those sort of uh, banana style vapes. But, you know, if you do like your banana vapes, especially mixed in with a bit of a sort of cake mix or cake batter, then, uh, you know, you're probably going to enjoy it a lot more than what I am at the moment. You know, it's, it's a nice banana flavour, but. Just, uh, just not my cup of tea. Okay, so that was the acacia. Next up is Snatcher, and this is a, uh, well, it's described as chewy milk bottle sweets and vanilla ice cream, morphing slowly into a rich rice pudding all day, every day. Okay, so this is Snatcher. Just put too much in there, just quickly dab that up. That's a bit gurgly. Okay, now uh, the description I think described it as uh, milk bottles and rice pudding, something like that. Um, milk bottles, for those who aren't aware, are these little sort of tiny. Sort of white milk bottle shaped sort of chewy sweets you used to be able to get when you was a kid. Well, I'd imagine you still get them now, but I used to eat uh, those when I was a kid. I'm not really getting that flavour. However, I would say it's a very milky flavour, but not quite milk bottles. Not what I would describe as milk bottles. But one thing that I think is quite prominent, though, is the rice pudding. I think that actually does taste like rice pudding. Bearing in mind, though, it's probably been... 30 years since I last had rice pudding, so my memory of it could be completely different. But from what I can recall, the first thing I tried when I uh, first thing I, I noticed when I took that first inhale wasn't so much the, uh, the milk but the actual rice pudding flavour. And that's, uh, that's pretty nice that is actually. If I was going to describe it, it would definitely be rice pudding with uh, a very sort of milky edge to it. I wouldn't really describe it as milk bottle flavour, but uh, I would definitely describe it as a rice pudding flavour. Uh, but like I said, apologies for that. That's Sky News that let me know something's going on. Um, yeah, so uh, rice pudding flavour with quite a, uh, a strong sort of milky, milky edge. <laughs> it's a really rubbish way of describing it, but that's the best I can do. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's definitely the nicest one out of the ones I've tried so far. So that is the Snatcher. Okay, so next in line is the Sly Fox. 
I'm not too sure why it's called Sly Fox, but this is described as freshly baked gingerbread, warm, chewy and fresh from the oven, perfect with a nice cup of tea. Okay, so I think the description was ginger cake, and uh, to be honest, that is exactly how I would uh, describe it. I'm not too sure how else to describe it other than it tastes uh, pretty much exactly like ginger cake. It's been a while since I've had like real ginger cake, but I'd say it's been within the last year with a nice little bit of custard. Um, so my recollection of it is still quite sort of fresh and I'll definitely um, describe this as a, a ginger cake flavour and uh, I don't really know what else to say about it to be quite honest. Uh, the strength of the flavour again is it, quite strong but not overly strong. If it was any stronger I probably wouldn't enjoy it after maybe 15 minutes worth of vaping but as the strength goes it's probably going to be okay for me to wait for you know a couple of hours at a time maybe after that i probably would get a little bit fed up with it just because like i said uh, i have mentioned i'm just not into those sort of flavors i like my tobaccos and I like my really sort of um thirst quenching fruity flavors those are the ones that sort of uh, tick the boxes for me but uh, if you like gingerbread cake you know chances are you're going to really enjoy this one Um, again, not really too sure I can tell you about it. It's ginger cake, that's what it tastes like. Okay, so that was Sly Fox. Okay, so the uh, last one is SY4, and this is described as flu cured Virginia tobacco, caramel, English fudge, and a dash of Madagascan vanilla. Our take on the classic RY4. Okay, so this is their version of RY4, and the RY4 that I used to vape sort of seven years ago now, um, which was made by like this Chinese manufacturers, uh, is very, very different compared to the sort of modern day takes on RY4. I haven't found any sort of, um, uh, what's the word, uh, UK made or USA made e liquid that uh, comes anywhere near what the real RY4 tastes like. And to be honest, this doesn't taste anything like the original RY4 either, which was a um, quite a sort of deep, smoky tobacco flavour mixed in with a really sort of heavy dollop of caramel. Um, this, like I said, doesn't really particularly taste like RY4. However, it's a really nice flavour. But I would describe this as a almost like biscuit type flavour. It's a biscuit mixed in with a bit of caramel. Um, it's like biscuit is the first flavour I get, caramel and a little bit of tobacco in there. Not, uh, not a massive amount, I think the tobacco could be a little bit stronger for me personally but uh, it's a really nice biscuit like caramel biscuit is the way I describe it with the emphasis on the biscuit. I like a sort of, um, not a shortbread, like a uh, digestive biscuit. That's the, that's the best way I can sort of uh, describe it. Really nice flavour though. If I hadn't known it's meant to have tobacco in it, I very much doubt I'd actually uh, class it as a tobacco flavour because uh, like I said, the, the flavour of the biscuit is, is definitely a, the strongest flavour and you get a hint of caramel and then a very sort of faint sort of tobacco sort of aftertaste but uh, for me this is more biscuit rather than tobacco but it's, it's a really nice flavour and this is definitely 
the nicest one out of all five that I've tried. Nice sort of uh, sweet edge to it as well. Um, I would say that this is something I could probably quite happily vape on all day and I probably will vape on it for the rest of the day now. I'll probably find a, a tank and fill it up with that one because uh, this one is uh, vaping really nicely. Yeah, so in summary, it's um, not really what I would class as a RY4 flavour. Uh, the tobacco needs to be stronger for it to sort of fall into that bracket for me personally anyway. But uh, if they described it as a, a biscuit vape, it would be spot on. Um, so if you like sort of biscuit sort of flavours, nice little sweet biscuits, I think you'd actually love this one because this is a really nice flavour. Okay, so that was the SY4. Okay, so they were all the uh, the new flavours in their platinum range uh, from Mirage Cigarettes. And if you want to have your chance to win the whole range, uh, 30 ml bottles, five flavours in there. You've got the Blockbuster, Snatcher, Acacia, SY4 and Sly Fox. Then all you need to do is simply leave a comment in the uh, YouTube's comment section below this video. And then next week I will uh, pick out a random winner using the... Uh, uh, what's it called, uh, YouTube random comment picker software. Okay, so like I said, if you want your chance to win the uh, the new platinum range, then just leave a comment in the YouTube's comment section below. Out of those flavors, um, is it Acacia and the um, Sly Fox? No, I, I can quite happily live in the, uh, the comfort of knowing I'll never have to vape those ones again. You know, that was all right, just not for me personally. Uh, Blockbuster, the popcorn one, is surprisingly moorish. Uh, the first sort of few vapes now, it was nice, but uh, I thought, well, you know, I could vape it for a little bit, but not overly bothered if I never had that again. But uh, I did actually keep on going back to that yesterday as well. Uh, the other one, which was um, the rice pudding one, Snatcher. Again, that's a really nice vape, that is. Um, didn't really taste too much like milk bottles, but uh, if you like a nice little rice pudding style vapor, you know, it's really nice. Uh, but definitely, though, my favourite one out the out the bunch is the SY4, which is their take on RY4, but doesn't taste anything like RY4, but it's still a really nice flavour, and that's what I've got in here at the moment. And um, the best way that I can describe, you know, having vaped it more and more throughout yesterday and today, is um, McVitie's Digestive Biscuits. I'm not too sure if you get those uh, in, in other countries, but in England, you know, they're quite a popular sort of... Uh, biscuit that you dunk into a cup of tea uh, but for me that is pretty much spot on the flavour I get out of this which is no, nothing like the original RY4 to be quite honest but it is a really nice uh, flavour and I think that I should, I, I should probably actually change it to like you know a biscuit type flavour rather than calling it SY4. Just, um, just a really nice vape. Okay, so next thing to talk about is uh, something that I purchased. I um, can't remember when I got it now, maybe four or five days ago, something like that. And it is the uh, world's first coilless tank called the Altus or Altus. Um, now, I had heard a few people talking about this on the forums and Facebook and that, and, uh, you know, it did sort of. Um, piqued my interest because, you know, you see words are like world's first coilless atomizer. And then I thought, well, let's do a quick search to see if anyone in the UK has them. And I found out at uh, evolutionvaping.co.uk, they had them in stock. Uh, they always seem to have stock a little bit earlier than other people. So if you are after one of those sort of um, items that tends to come out in America first and then over here, they do seem to be one of the companies who uh, gets things in a little bit quicker than others. And their prices are pretty good as well, really. Well, except for <laughs> except for this occasion, um, so I went along to I see it on the uh, the Google results. You know the uh, the atomizer that I was talking about, the Altus. Uh, clicked on the link, thinking it was going to be around twenty five, thirty pounds, something like you know a mass produced sort of um, you know atomizer. 
And um, the eyes knee fell out of my head when I saw a hundred pound price tag for it. And immediately my interest went, <laughs> because uh, you know, I thought, fuck that, there's no way I'm gonna pay hundred pound for an atomizer like that. I don't mind paying hundred pound for an atomizer if it's been made by guys sort of sitting there in his shed, you know, tooling it by hand, or he's invested you know, thousands of pounds in his, of his own money into buying a little sort of CNC machine. And the, you know, I can understand sort of paying that sort of premium price, but for, a sort of mass produced sort of tank, you know, 100 pound is just taking the piss to be quite honest. Anyway, I think it's uh, two days later uh, in my sort of YouTube feed, I see that uh, Matt from Suck My Mod had uploaded a review on the altar. So I thought, well, let's go along and uh, see what Matty Boy thinks about it. And um, he didn't seem to be particularly impressed. He seemed to be. Um, a little bit sort of conservative in uh, rather than rather than sort of saying, oh, this is shit, you know, the impression I got was they thought, well, it's all right. You know, it's very much like how I sort of tend to review things, you know, rather than sort of using expletives, you just sort of try and be a bit sort of um, diplomatic <laughs> in what you're actually going to say. But the impression I got was that, you know, it could be good, but there's flaws and it wicks like a pair of old socks. And now normally if you watch a review like that, it's going to put you off <laughs> buying it. But for some reason I watched it and I thought, Matt thinks it's a bit wanky. I'm going to buy it. And then I did. I just went and bought it. I don't know why I did because I, I well, yeah, I do regret it because it's £100 that I could have spent, you know, going out for a nice meal with a family or, well, doing anything really, basically. And um, it just doesn't work particularly brilliant. Yes, it may be the world's first uh, coilless tank, but um, you know, if it don't work all that great, then like, what's the freaking point? So I've got it here, and um, I would agree with Matt, you know, the wicking side of things is a, is a bit of a bitch, to be quite honest. I had lots and lots of sort of uh, dry hits and that. I found the best way to do it is literally use the least amount of pos least amount of cotton you can possibly get away with. And this setup I've got in here at the moment, it's definitely the best setup that I've done with it so far. and But, you know, I am using sort of uh, hardly any cotton. So, but, you know, it's not had any dry hits at all. It's not, it's been wicking perfectly fine though, so I've got to give it that. Now, my sort of main issues with it is that the flavour, it's just very, very muted. Like, you can taste your e-liquid, but the flavour is... No, it, I can say again, I'm going to go back to uh, what Matt said. He said it's a clean taste, and I get exactly what he's saying there. It is definitely a, a sort of a clean flavour, but for me, it's a very clean but quite muted flavour. You know, um, so that's a bit of a disappointment. I think the vapour production is perfectly acceptable. I'll give you a, a quick blast now. You see, like vapor production, no, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You know, you may not win sort of hardcore vaping competitions, but you know, there's still plenty enough vapor there, though. But with that sort of leads on to another sort of slight issue I've had with it, and that if you're going to use it in regular sort of variable wattage mode, well, for starters, you know, you press, you put your finger on the button, and like you know, sort of five seconds later, it decides to start heating up. So it's, it's quite a long time for it to heat up. Obviously, the more you keep on vaping it, then it's not too bad. But I found then, though, is that the more you keep on vaping it, because it's not wicking particularly great, you know, you just end up getting a really nasty sort of dry hit quite quickly, really. Uh, the best way that I've managed to get this to work is on my Rulu, uh, set to um, temperature control mode in the, uh, I think it's the titanium setting. Literally, I've got to be honest with you, I just tapped a few buttons, and it came up with this screen. I thought, let's just try it. I thought, oh, it seems to be working quite nicely. So it is pure luck that I found this. Uh, so this is the uh, the titanium mode. Uh, the coil is reading 0.36 ohms. Uh, it's at 200 watts, um, and it's at 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, normally when I, I don't really use temperature control that much, but when I do, I normally have it set around sort of 420, 40 something like that and so uh, at 600 you know you'd be thinking oh this is gonna you know this isn't gonna be working it's gonna start scorching the cotton almost straight away but uh, I've been using this for in this with the in this sort of temperature control mode for quite a few days now even with the uh, when the tank wasn't wicking that well 
and the temperature control mode at 600 degrees Fahrenheit is still not actually scorching the cotton quite while it is because I would have thought it would do but it's not and you're not getting that sort of burnt flavour it's just that the, the actual flavour of the juice sort of completely goes when you are starting to get a dry hit but with this at the moment with very minimal cotton you know I'm not getting any sort of dry hits you can actually see when I take a drag a little bubble pops up which lets you know that it's sort of wicking properly so like I said no I'm going to use this at 600 degrees Fahrenheit which seems incredibly high and the ruler is at 200 watts so it means it sort of basically eliminates that ramp up time we still got about you know half a second, but if I've done this in variable wattage mode, I could press that button, go and make a cup of tea, come back, and then it might have started heating up by then. Now, when I've done this particular setup, I did take a few little photos so you can see here uh, the sort of um, coil, which is like a ceramic square, and inside, I believe, is a tungsten wire which is like the heating element which is then obviously sort of uh, coated in this uh, ceramic. I know a lot of people have, have been um, very sort of, uh, what's the word, um, concerned about the actual materials used in here. I don't know whether they're 100% safe or not so I'm not going to make any comments about that. All I know is that I used to smoke 40 cigarettes a day. I could uh, get a dog turd, wrap it up in a sheet of lead and smoke that and it would still be safer than a cigarette. So you know, even if this isn't 100% safe at the moment, I'm not too concerned personally. Uh, but obviously, if we can obviously get things as safe as they can possibly get, then obviously that's a good thing. But I don't, like I said, you know, the manufacturer seems to be a little bit cagey about what the actual materials are. I'm not too sure whether he has released that info yet or not. But uh, for me personally, no, I ain't going to vape it for the time being anyway until I sort of uh, get some definite confirmation either way. Uh, yeah, so you have that little ceramic thing, but the actual sort of setup of it is a real ball ache because you have to try and wrap a piece of cotton over the top of it, which, you know, that's not sort of too much of an issue. You then have to sort of wedge it down this uh, sort of central piece into these uh, two slots. Again, that's not too much of an issue, but then from that point onwards, you've got these two great big bits of cotton sticking out on either side. You then have to try and get an O-ring over the top of that, which can quite easily sort of catch onto the cotton or trap the cotton and cause you problems. Then once you've done that, you then have to twist it into this base section, which then nine times out of 10, completely fucks your cotton up. You know, and that sort of like really wound me up having to actually sort of set it up that way, because it could have been done so much simpler, I think, anyway. Biggest, biggest gripe though with this thing is filling it up. What a fucking ball ache. Let me just uh, try and explain. So normally, like, if you've got a, a tank and you have to fill it up from the bottom, all you do is unscrew the bottom like that and pour your juice in. But look, I've still got another bit on there. So you unscrew that bit, and you've still got this bit on there. Now, it wouldn't be too bad. If I could just simply unscrew this, it would be annoying because it's two things you've got to take off, but at least, you know, I could fill it up quite easily. But no matter how loose I put this piece on. Obviously, you have to have it tight enough to create a seal and stop all your juice pissing out. But uh, I'll try and do it as the bare minimum. Literally, as soon as you start vaping, it's almost like Superman has come along and really giving it an extra tug because, like, I'm not, like, I'm six foot four. I'm quite sort of sporty. I'm, I would say I'm sort of relatively strong. I've got big old strong hands. But fuck me, I can't undo this thing with, like, just using my bare hands. Saying that, look, I've just fucking done it now. Maybe still look like a cunt. But that's, that, is, that is literally the first time I've ever managed to uh, take that off. And that may only be because I sort of filled it up just before coming in here. But uh, <laughs> most of the time, apart from that one exception, I've had to get uh, rubber bands and put that around the base to get a really decent sort of grip on it. Because it, for some reason, I don't know if it's the O-rings or getting a like bonding to the the tank or or what because there's nothing wrong with the threading the threading is nice and smooth no problems there but uh yeah apart from that one occasion which is just sort of typical when you're trying to say something and you just might completely contradict yourself um apart from that one occasion you know undoing it just to simply fill it up you know is right pain in the eye. so i'd never ever leave the house with this tank and a bottle of juice even though if i was going to go out for the day because if I went through the tank, I know it'd be such a pain trying to fill it up again in public, you know. So, uh, you know, it's it's a nice looking tank. The actual build quality seems to be quite good. It's no different in build quality to something like 
you know, like a Mu tank here, which is, or Mu tank, which is a brilliant tank, you know, same sort of materials, same build quality, and that costs like, a fraction of the price. And, uh, and something like this, you know, the uh, Aspire Cleto, this is £100, £20, five times cheaper, and in my opinion, this, this performs five times better than that. The only thing this is missing is a, uh, a top where you can fill it up from the top with AM to actually sort of unscrew the lid. I'm going to quick token that as well. Because this Cleto is a, is a gorgeous vape. Yeah, so um, I mean, like it's a shame. It's great that people are coming up with new ways to to do things, you know, because it's, it gets very boring. When every new mod that comes out is the same. Every new atomizer that comes out is the same. And so, you know, I do tip me out to the guy for actually trying to think outside the box and come up with something that is a little bit different, you know. So fair play to him there, but. It's, it needs work. I think that's a fair assessment, and uh, the price needs to come down to thirty quid. I mean, like, um, if they brought out a V two with all the things changed and it was hundred pound, I, I can't see me spending another hundred pound because I know I'm probably going to use that for maybe another day or two, and then it'll be put in the drawer or given away, never to be used again. So it is a for me personally a bit of a waste of hundred quid and you know hundred quid is a lot of money for an atomizer these days especially when you get things like the mu tank i can't remember how much it was i think 28 quid uh the cleto 20 quid you know and they just perform miles miles better the flavor is stronger uh the vapor is more well, you're getting more vapor i feel as well at the same sort of uh, wattages uh easier to use easier to set up so it's um if i was gonna Write out its school report, I'll be writing much try harder. Let's put it that way. So um yeah, a bit of a shame really. Um what else was I gonna talk about? Uh I can't really think actually. I'm not in too sure how long this has been going on for either. Um don't want to be too long of a uh, recording, so I think I'll wrap it up there for today. Um I am sort of struggling a little bit to be honest with uh, with things to do. I know I've still got to do my DIY e-liquid mixing video and i promise you you know i am trying to find the time to do that and i will eventually do that uh, soon but uh, it just always seems that like something sort of crops up you know just when i get that bit of spare time something else crops up you know so i'm not trying to avoid it you know i do want to get that done and get it out to you just to sort of show you how i mix up personally and uh, you know i don't sort of give you a definite date but it is definitely in my mind constantly and i will try and get it done as soon as i possibly can um if you do have questions that you would like me to answer or if there's topics you'd like me to uh, discuss or go through or anything you can think of really because like i said i'm not a natural vlogger and uh during the week i get really excited about recording the next vlog and by sunday night i'm starting to sort of get really worried because i'm thinking i don't know what to say i don't know what to say and uh so I really need you guys to help me out in order to, to make uh, better vlogs for you lot to watch, basically. So please, for the love of God, give me some ideas. Otherwise, um, I'm just not too sure what, where I'm going to be going with this. So uh, please give me some ideas, ask me some questions, and um, hopefully I can sort of take it a little bit better or make it a little bit better. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you want to win the uh, miragecigarettes.co.uk platinum range of e-liquid, then just make sure you leave a comment below and I'll uh, announce the winner in the next vlog next week. Okay guys, very best of luck to you. Have a fantastic week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.